okay, I was telling McKelty, she goes, why are they, why else are they here? Because moving you, wedding, but then there's one more reason. Oh, we're just gonna go look at property in Montana. Property two. Hold on. Okay. Oh, man! I cannot believe, I, I cannot believe that I have done all this. You have cheated me out of my contact with my family. Hi friends, it's Katie from Without a Crystal Ball. It is Friday the 13th, September 13th, 2024. Nothing better than to start the Friday the 13th with discussion about the ever spooky and eerily horrific, horrific Cody Brown and his reaction to ex-wives, Christine and Janelle, talking about their potential move, that is Janelle's potential move with her daughter Madison after she and Cody split. If you recall, at the end of last season, Christine and Janelle sat down at a vacation rental in Flagstaff, and Janelle talked about her relationship with Cody. She was unable to define where they were at. She couldn't say if they were together or not together. She couldn't figure out with her faith if she was divorced or not. Christine was urging her to move at the time. She said that there was really no purpose for her to stay. And Janelle had made the comment about how she didn't want Christine to feel sorry for her, to pity her, that she was making good decisions and that she was fine. Janelle was more resistant in season 18 to moving than it would appear in season 19. Now, we already know that she doesn't move to Montana. So this is the lead up, I guess, to them looking at properties, making the the decision to move and where they're going to go with this move. But obviously, Cody, because he is so narcissistic, makes the entire situation about him. In the very beginning of this video, I showed you them talking, Christine, Janelle, and Maddie, about this potential move. I showed you that they were discussing the possibility of building in Montana. And then I added or edited in videos of Cody having a meltdown, acting like he's the one that's the victim, and basically saying that Janelle cheated him out of his family. I did that because it's a good lead up to what his response is in this situation. And I want to remind everyone that Cody spent a lot of time during COVID and even before COVID separating himself from these women because he got tired, I think, of polygamy. And Cody really didn't make the time to spend with his family. He would consistently cause conflicts and then blame other people when the drama he created and the rules that he defined were impossible for people to meet or obey. And then when they didn't do what he wanted, then he blamed them for not having a Christmas with them. Remember, like the text exchange and you got to make an apology. It was like they're always moving the goalposts. So now Cody is going to say that this move is punishing him because he wants to now spend time with his family. The narcissist rewriting history. So let's dive into the clip. Okay, I was telling McKelty, she goes, why are they, why else are they here? Because moving you, wedding, but then there's one more reason. Oh, we're just going to go look at property in Montana. Property to build on. <gasps> I know, that's the secret. And what's more, Janelle's talking about possibly moving with them. All of this was filmed well before Garrison passed away. And if you understand that leading up to season 19, Janelle was very resistant on leaving and not wanting to leave Flagstaff and wasn't necessarily sure where her relationship was. This is obviously a big step for Janelle. All of last season, Christine was very much being kind of like Janelle's hype girl, trying to get Janelle motivated and make Janelle see that there was a possibility for her life outside of Cody. It's very obvious that Christine has known that Janelle has been very unhappy for years. And Janelle has a very 
laid back personality in that she is more of an introvert and she isn't as expressive as Christine. And she's also a lot more methodical. Christine's the kind of person that I think when she makes a decision about something, she has to take action. And Janelle's the type of woman that has to list out all of the pros and cons and weigh all of the options before she's going to make a decision to one, leave Cody and two, leave a city. You have to remember that at the time that all of this was happening, Janelle had children in Flagstaff that she was connected to and very, you know, enmeshed with. She had her daughter, Savannah, Gabriel, and Garrison. And because of her kids' ties there, Gabriel was in school at NAU and Garrison was in college and in the National Guard and working, I think she sense, felt a sense of not wanting to uproot her life because she had brought her children there and she didn't want to leave them. And she had made comments like that on social media, like that J Christine was able to leave and she d didn't necessarily worry about leaving her kids like she left Gwendolyn. And Janelle didn't know that she was willing to do that yet. So the fact that we're at this point now and Janelle's like, okay, I'm ready to move. Christine is obviously very excited. Staff no longer feels permanent. And if I had another option, it, I would probably take it. Not me. They know that I suffer from FOMO about my family. Fear of missing out, okay? So anything they can do that excludes me is a punishment to me. Let's compare the way that these two people are discussing their future. Janelle has made a decision, a very brave one, to uproot herself and leave polygamy, a faith and a system that she has been indoctrinated in since she was a young adult when she met the Brown family and she met Mary. Mary and Adam, she married Adam, if you recall, Ad Mary's brother. And she got to know the Barbers, and that's how she got indoctrinated and pulled into this cult. And then her mother married Wynne Brown, Aunt Cody's dad, and then she married Cody, her stepbrother. It's all weird. Anyway, Janelle's choice to leave took her years to get to. For a long time, she was able to kind of bury her head in the sand and accept everything for what it was because she was living righteously and living the principle of plural marriage, which in the apostolic united brother and they would say living the fullness of the gospel you're you're living your life as close to god as possible and everything that you're doing is for god all of the pain you're experiencing is going to make you a better more perfect person in heaven in your celestial kingdom all of the bad feelings she had were like weaponized against her by the cult and told that those were sins and evil and wicked. She wasn't allowed to have her own feelings. Her choice to leave is a very brave one because she's leaving everything she knows. She's leaving the only family she's really had for years. And she's choosing herself and not sacrificing what she needs or wants for anyone else, because the women in these cults often have to sacrifice everything for their husband. So in the worldview of the Apostolic United Brethren, when the orbit of the world is Cody, when everyone's orbiting around Cody, Cody's view of everyone in his family is that every single person is doing something either to get on his good side. So they're doing things to get his attention for positive attention, or they're doing things negatively in a vindictive fashion to get his attention and to punish him. He doesn't view anyone as anyone other than someone competing for him, a object. And because he doesn't see that this is a good thing for them, all he thinks about is himself. He only thinks about himself. If your husband or your quote unquote husband was not a narcissist and he was just a normal person, if he and you split, your choice to move wouldn't be viewed as punishment, right? Because you have to remember for years, Cody didn't want anything to do with them. He wasn't engaging with them. He wasn't going over to Janelle's house to spend time with her kids and her, their kids. He wasn't interested in participating in a marital relationship with her or a familial relationship with her children. So he chose to miss out on all of it. He chose that he didn't want to be there. And he expected Janelle to just stay there because for years and years and years, he did this to her and she didn't do anything about it. And so I think for Cody, 
the fact that he doesn't have a choice anymore is the biggest problem for him. It's not that he actually wants her or even misses her. It's that now he doesn't have the choice or the option. And it's like, it's like that old adage of like, you always want what you can't have. That's the world that Cody lives in because with narcissism, it's always about jealousy, projection, gaslighting, having to protect his image. He So he has to protect his image of this grandiose man with a big ego and full of confidence. And so everything is a vic- everything is being projected at him. Like all of these choices by Janelle are vendettas and vindictive and with malice. Instead of the rational human being like, well, it's natural when you split up with someone that people would want to move on with their lives. It's not like Christine and Janelle are conspiring or colluding, as he says, to make him unhappy by choosing to leave. What they actually did were they were the victims of a polygamous cult where they had been subjugated into a submissive role where they had to serve Cody and cater to Cody for more than 25 years. They had to go along with all of Cody's whims, all of his demands, compete for his attention, compete for the resources, and bend their personalities to cater and to fit to him. It got to, as Janelle said, a co- the cost-benefit analysis for her was that Cody had been at one point in time more of an engaged father and more interested in her children. And when he stopped showing interest in her kids and her kids started to express to her the inequity that they were feeling because Cody was spending so much time with Robin and chasing Robin's kids and then adopting those kids and then fathering two children with her and then basically creating his own monogamous family with Robin and not integrating that with anyone. Janelle knew when Cody married Robin that he was going to change. She was the most opposed to the change in the family dynamic because she felt like the fabric of the culture of their family had always revolved around Mary being the legal wife. And she didn't understand or comprehend really how this change would impact the family. She even expressed doubts to Cody about this and was worried that he was going to ride off into the sunset with Robin. Like this really was him cutting ties with the family. And she was right. Cody promised her that he would not do that. He promised he was still going to keep everything the same, that everything would remain the same, that he wasn't divorcing Mary so that he and Robin could be in a monogamous relationship. Once Mary no longer had legal authority over the finances and no longer shared a bank account with Cody, he and Robin had access to all of the money and the resources, and they didn't have to share it with anyone. And that's when their dynamic became untenable for most of these women. That's when Robin and Cody started using and pilfering all the money, and then Janelle's left nearly homeless and Flagstaff, and Cody doesn't care. He's not even worried about it. He spends all of his time and energy trying to get Robin into a house that he wants to buy with her because, well, duh, he's her husband legally, so it would be his house too, right? It's not Robin's house. Just want to let you know, it's Cody and Robin's house. They call it Robin's house, but it's Cody and Robin's house. He's as much on that mortgage and title as Robin. So he didn't care about Janelle or her daughter having a house. He didn't care about them even having a home on Coyote Pass. He didn't even want to pay off the property. He did not care because all he cared about was Robin. So now he's like, well, oh, so now you want to leave? And now this is like punishment? Meanwhile, he was the one punishing her for years, punishing her disobedience, punishing her kids' disobedience, punishing their lack of adherence to the patriarchy. He cl- he told her that she wasn't loyal, that she had was the Teflon queen, that she was lazy about the rules and lazy about parenting. She He accused her of not co-parenting with him when he was never around to co-parent with to begin with. He was punishing her And now it's like, oh, no, they're punishing me. He always flips it onto him. It must be, frankly, exhausting to be involved with a man like this. I cannot fathom being married to a narcissist. It would be horrible. 
because you are always in the middle of drama. You are always in the middle of chaos. You are always in the middle of their needs, their wants, their them, them. It's like me, 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 me. No concept that anyone else exists. Cody will never change. And that's why I don't expect much from him this season. I expect this reaction is going to be what we see all season. Any Everything that Mary does, that Christine does, or that Janelle does for themselves to make themselves happy will somehow be, all will be done with vindictive malice motive to get back at him and to punish him. When really, he was the one that had a vindictive malice motive and punished all of them for years. Every accusation of a narcissist is a confession. So Cody is basically confessing to punishing Christine and Janelle. So what are your thoughts about this clip? Is this what you've come to expect? Are you happy about Janelle moving and making this step forward? Let me know in the comments below. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, make sure to subscribe. So many of you watch every single video and are not yet subscribed. Let's get to 400,000 subscribers. Make sure to click the bell so you never miss a video. And thank you all so much for watching. Bye, everyone.